when they see companies not growing, they lose interest in them. And so, yeah, I, I you know, from some of the comments I've heard from Barrick that, that they want, uh, they want only want to invest in things that have exciting returns at $1,200 gold. I don't think gold's going back to 1200 in our lifetimes. So uh, when you have that type of a criteria, you're never going to buy anything. And if you're never going to buy anything in our industry, you're going to shrink. State that uh, the gold price does drive gold stocks and share performance. So how do you feel about the price overall right now? Are we in a bear cycle? Are we in a cyclical commodity boom cycle, as some may speculate? What's your view? Um, well, I, I, I'm very positive on the price of gold going forward. Um, so I don't know whether I characterize this as a bear cycle, but uh, I think it's just part of the cycles of the gold business. And uh, right now it's struggling a little bit, but uh, I think as we go forward, I think gold will do quite well. Okay. And what are some of the forces that might do or might drag up the gold price in your opinion? Well, uh, inflation uh, for sure, um, but that might be offset a little bit by higher interest rates. But uh, I think inflation will win out in the end. And so I think it'll be inflation and all these governments uh, running up debts and printing money uh, will force people to take a harder look at gold and that will move the price ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right, let's talk about the current mining sector. Now, uh, not a lot of activity I've heard, uh, not a lot of buzz from uh, the executives and the investors I've spoken to recently. Do you think M&A in the gold sector has been slowing down? And if it has been, do you see it picking up anytime soon? That's a great question. I, I would have thought that there would have been more M&A, but at, at uh, you know, $1,800 gold, um, a lot of these companies, these mid-sized companies especially, they can make money and, and pay their executives and keep things moving forward. So there's no real pressure on them to try to get together or consolidate the industry, which I think is absolutely necessary for the industry to go forward. So. Uh, uh, as long as these people are comfortable in their in their CEO chairs, um, I think there'll be limited M and A activity. Limited M and A activity. Well, let's talk about some of the seniors then. Barrick, for example, do you think they're making a mistake not making any significant deals right now at current prices and current market conditions? Well, you know, as I said, people like growth, and. Um, when they see companies not growing, they lose interest in them. And so, yeah, I, I you know, from some of the comments I've heard from Barrick that, that they want, uh, they want only want to invest in things that have exciting returns at $1,200 gold. I don't think gold's going back to 1200 in our lifetimes. So uh, when you have that type of a criteria, you're never gonna buy anything. And if you're never gonna buy anything in our industry, you're gonna shrink. So yeah, I think it's a mistake for them not to be out there uh, trying to tie up assets. Wait, gold's not going back to $1,200 again in our lifetimes. That, it, was, it wasn't that long ago that gold was at $1,200. I mean, it was within a decade ago. So yeah. wh why do you think that's not possible anymore going, going forward? Well, first, we're having trouble finding gold. Um, and secondly, just the, the environment that we're in now, I, I don't see gold ever going back to $1,200. Why are we having trouble outlook for you? That makes sense. Oh, what? 2,400, 2,500. Okay. And you still be comfortable making deals at 2,500? Absolutely. As I say, I, I think we're at peak, peak gold. Um, and uh, for that reason, I think the price of gold is going to do extremely well going forward. A lot of people are wondering whether or not there's technological innovations in the mining space, like the oil and uh, well, the, the gold mining space in particular, like the oil and shale industries have seen in the last two decades. What do you think? Yeah, I don't think there's any visible technical improvement in how we explore for or exploit mining assets. Um, you know, I'm always jealous of the oil and gas industry. The big advantage they have is that the, the specific gravity of oil is different than the specific gravity of the rocks that it's in. The challenge we have with gold is the specific gravity of the ore is identical to the specific gravity of the waste rock. And so we just haven't found a way 
from surface or from even underground with mm -hmm. electronics or with pulses or whatever to differentiate what's ore and what's waste. Well, if you had to talk to an engineer about creating a wish list of technological improvements that you'd like to see in the coming decades, what would that list include? Oh, the list would be something that can identify very low-grade or low-grade gold uh, deposits mixed in with waste rock and be able to tell them apart. That would be what I would wish for. Okay. I, I want to end on um, the outlook for the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the mining industry as it relates to younger people. Now, my, my generation, the millennials, uh, we, we've been absorbed by media hype around stocks, perhaps, meme stocks, cryptocurrencies, and all that. Very few younger people, my generation or younger, are heavily interested or invested in, in the gold and resource sector. That's not to say there aren't any, but we're just, we're just in the minority. And so yeah. is the industry doing anything to attract younger capital or not? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I think the industry, they're, they're struggling to attract capital, period. Uh, they don't have the bandwidth to focus on younger people. And, and again, younger people you know, are, are so interested in growth and so interested in companies that have bright, bright, obviously bright futures in front of them, it's going to be difficult to attract them to gold, especially if we hit gold. So if gold production start, you know, continues to flatten out and then starts to decline. I think it'll be very tough to attract young people. It is tough, and especially when cryptocurrencies are, you know, are burgeoning a, a sector that's stealing a lot of capital. How can gold compete with, let's say, Bitcoin in attracting capital? Well, as I say, the price will have to move first. Mm. So if you see the price of gold go to $2,400, all of a sudden capital and young people will show up. Okay. All right. Ian, final words for, uh, for the younger generation, career advice, outlook on the economy, outlook on the industry that, uh, that maybe a 20-year-old Ian Telfer would like to know if he, were, if he were here today. Well, listen. Obviously, for me, it's been an incredible industry to be a part of. I had a great deal of fun. I've met some fabulous people, and I've had a little bit of success. And uh, I think those opportunities are still there. And uh, I guess to young people, I would say that uh, when you're looking at where to put your career, uh, going to a sector that's maybe a little bit out of favor might be an advantage to you less competitive and maybe some opportunities that other are, others aren't seeing. So it's a, an industry people should look at for sure. And you can have great success there, have a lot of fun and, and meet some wonderful people. Okay.